All right, let's move on to your website. I know some of you guys came here for the website portion. This isn't a real long one, but I'm gonna show you where you can get a lot of information, uh, workshops that I've done in the past on holistic web design and making your website effective. So you can have more thorough, uh, in-depth material on that if you want it, okay? First of all, there's no place like home, <laughs> right? A website is your home. That's where you build your house. That is the front door to your business on the internet. It's very important, okay? So let's talk about what a quality website will do for you. Okay, it'll build trust and credibility. One of the most important pieces of a website is to build trust and credibility. Okay, it'll let Google know that you're there and what you do. I wasn't gonna get into search engine optimization, but this is, this is in that area, it's in that field. When people search for terms, you wanna be found, right? But Google has to know what you do and what you're about, okay? Uh, it also engages visitors and gets them to take action. Remember we were talking about conversions? A good website will get people to buy, read, watch the video, click, share your article, whatever it is. That's what you want them to do. Uh, it'll inform and educate your customers and collect information about your visitors for you if you do analytics and stuff like that. We're not gonna get into that because we don't have a lot of time, but it can collect information about who's visiting your website, where they're visiting it from. I mean, if you have a website in California and you thought your business was predominantly from California, all of a sudden your analytics show you you got 500 sales from Minnesota, wouldn't you wanna know that? Mm -hmm. You know, people from that are interested, so you, now you can market to those people specifically. You can segment them and, and find out why they're being drawn there and increase that, okay? Uh, informing and educating your visitors is very important. I assume all of you have businesses, are gonna have businesses where you provide real value for people. And so you wanna let them know that. You wanna educate them on that, okay? And basically websites, one of the best things is they'll make the sale for you while you sleep, okay? They can do it for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week where you can't do that yourself, okay? So elements every homepage needs. This is, this is a big subject, there's a lot of thoughts on this uh, in our industry, but these are some general concepts that you need. Okay, first of all, your messaging needs to be clear. Again, who you are and what you need to do, what you do needs to be evident right away, whether that's visually, whether that's in your name, whether, whether it's your tagline, whatever it is that needs to be very clear what you do. People, if you uh, repair cars, don't have pictures of pretty kitties on your website when they first come to it. Okay, it's gonna confuse people right away. They need to, that needs to be that immediate identification of what you do, okay? Uh, your navigation needs to be clear and visible. Don't make people think. Uh, there's a lot of designers out there, they're getting very clever with navigation and hiding it and doing different things with it. You don't wanna frustrate your visit, visitor the minute they get there. Conventions, standards, unless you're a, like an artist, or like a musician, or you do graphic arts, or there's some reason you need to have an exception uh, to that, try to keep it down the middle if you can. Predictable, right? If people go to a website to buy something and it looks and operates just like Amazon, they're gonna be more comfortable, right? Versus something that looks totally foreign, okay? Uh, make sure your content's relevant and it's optimized for your business name and service area. So if you put content in there, you wanna make sure you're whatever writing you have in there, and then you wanna make sure it has your business name a couple of times on the home page, maybe your service area, and that's for Google, again. Uh, and again, I know I said we weren't gonna talk about SEO, but home pages should always be optimized for your business name and service area, not for everything else, okay? Uh, and you'll need a primary call to action. We're gonna talk about call to actions in a minute. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And you'll need supporting images, video, and graphics. Again, make sure they're relevant. So those are elements that every home page needs, okay? Uh, so why do uh, websites fail? And again, I didn't put an example up there because I've got a series of articles that's in your, uh, on this section on websites, on your handouts, there is a QR code and a URL for you to go to on a series I did on six reasons your website's ineffective. And it's a very long, detailed article with lots of examples and shows you, the, you know, what to do, and what not to do, okay? But why do websites fail? Well. There's a lack of quality content. The content just isn't good, okay? And needs, you need to have quality content. Uh, there's no direction. There's no call to actions. You're not asking people to do anything on your website when they land there. It's just informational, you know, okay? Uh, there's a lack of focus. It's not optimized. Uh, the usability is bad. Something's broken on it. It's not mobile responsive. I don't know if you guys have ever gone to a website, tried to look it on your phone, and it doesn't work. What do you do? 
just go to the next business, right? The next website. So you just had a customer in front of you and you lost them. What's CTA? Oh, call to action. I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a lack of performance. It's sluggish. I mean, you guys have gone to a website and had to wait and wait and wait, especially on your cell phone. They don't want that, okay? So those are some main reasons why websites. And again, if you guys have questions, please ask. Go ahead and raise your hand. It's fine. You guys uh, don't understand something. Uh, so what does a poor website feel like to a visitor? Just because you have great content, maybe on your website, uh, or you have the best product in the world, or the best service in the world, and everybody needs to know about it. And if people came to your website, they became instant millionaires. Uh, doesn't mean that when they get there, if it's designed poorly, that they're going to actually find it or locate it. Uh, the example I like to use is imagine there's this bookstore in downtown San Francisco that you heard about that has rare books. And this rare book, you heard they have, because you called and they said they had it. But when you got there, to that bookstore, there was a little sign on the desk that said, I'm out to lunch, help yourself, and leave the money on the counter. <laughs> okay? That's what we do with websites, right? It's basically, I mean, it's, it's you know, self-help, right? People come there, and they, they're, you're not there to direct them, so your website layout and everything has to be good enough that I can do it. So let's say you walk into that bookstore. Let's say you're in a hurry. You only have like 30 minutes, but you know they have what you really want. You're ready to buy. You've got cash in hand. You walk in the door. You're all excited. And that's what you see. <laughs> Are you going to search around for that book? No. Are you going to stick around to find what you heard was so great? <laughs> Probably not. So what does that look like on a website? Well, there you go. That's an example of a website that's just the layout. It's not, where does your eye go? Where, where do I find it? Where's my, I, I don't understand. What is, people are going to leave. They're going to, what I call is this is a land and leave website. They land there and they're gone. Okay? It's not very good. Okay? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, effective at calls to action. Again, calls to action are just asking people to do something. I want you to click on this button and fill out a form. I want you to click on this button and buy something. I want you to click on this button to schedule a free consultation with me. Okay, so you're trying to get them to take action. I want you to click on this button and subscribe to my newsletter. If you don't ask people to do something, they probably won't. They're going to be passive. I got a whole presentation on this. Got a picture with a guy with his mouth taped shut. It says closed mouths don't get fed. It's just the way it is. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, call to action elements. We've got uh, call to action buttons and offers. We've got things like exit intent pop-ups. Remember I told you guys about that a minute ago? Okay. Wait, we have a special offer. Enter email and get 15% off. That's a viable offer, something that somebody might be able to use. And countdown timers are very effective. How many of you have been affected by a countdown timer, honestly? How many of you went to buy something and saw a countdown timer, got nervous, and buy it? I work in the marketing industry, and I'm affected by these. I don't want to lose it, you know? Right? Especially on like uh, Amazon Day or something like that. You're really affected by that, okay? So, okay. So tell me, which of these buttons is better on a website? This one? Or that one? How many of you guys say A? How many of you see, say B? Okay, but how many of you guys have seen A on a website? Yeah. So why is B better? What's that? It gives you a reason to click. It gives you a reason to click. It motivates you, right? Free, uh, free trial. I like that. Know what you're clicking for, but A. You just click here to find. It's specific. You right, exactly. It's specific. Now, you don't always have the room on a button to tell people, you know, click here and you'll get 30 day free trial that starts the minute you, you, I mean, you have to be very, you have a limited number of words that you can use. But they're action words. You want people to take action usually, okay? Okay? Those are good. The green button, first of all, why is that button bright green? And this one's black. It draws attention. I can't tell you how many clients I've done websites and say, well, I love the website. I just don't like those bright red and green buttons. Or I don't like the yellow buttons. It's like, well, why? Well, it's ugly. It stands out. I said, well, how many standout buttons have you clicked on? Right? They need to be noticeable. They need to be there. So they're bright for a reason. Okay? Okay, those are good. But talk to me about these. Oh, God. Talk about the first one. What does that do to you? What is that? What is that? 
bring up? Emotion. emotion. What kind of emotions do is, does it bring up? Sympathy. Sympathy. Compassion. Right? I want to help. Okay? Now, if I just had a little orange button on the website that said donate, would you be as compelled to donate as you would with that picture accompanying it? This is what you need on your homepage, if possible. You need, again, we're speaking to an outcome, right? A result, something that we're going to do. When they take action, they're going to get a result. Something's going to happen. They're going to feel better. They're going to feel like they helped this poor dog, right? What does this one speak to? Oh, God. I've got to do that quick. Urgency. Why? Why is there, why is there an urgency? Because somebody can steal my identity. Not that they can spend anything with it. But. Yeah, I don't want to get ripped off. Yeah, all right. Right? It doesn't even say start your free membership. Theory. It just says start your membership. These are both extremely effective, what we call call to action blocks. If you can put these on your website, you're going to be one step ahead of everybody. 75% small businesses have no call to action on their website. None. So that means if you take nothing with you here today and you go home and you put an effective call to action or call to action block on your website, you're going to be better off than 75% of the small businesses that don't. Now, we all don't have causes or things that are this, but you can probably find something that will elicit a little bit of emotion, okay? Question. Yeah. Uh, the call to action should be on your, uh, on your landing page or your home page? Your home page. You should have a call to action on every page. That's what I tell people. But at least your home page, and I usually put two calls to action on a home page, one in the top part and one down towards the bottom. If I can, I can't always do that because of design limitations or whatever. But I have to try to have some kind of comp call to action because you never know where somebody's going to come into your website at, right? They can come in onto any page. And when they're there, you're going to want them to take action. You don't want them to guess what to do. You actually want to take them and say, here, let me help you, right? You know, uh, it's like when you walk into uh, Home Depot, how many people flock to help you when you walk into Home Depot to find that item, mm -hmm. right? It's hard to find some, it's not only hard to find your item sometimes, it's hard to find anyone to help you. <laughs> but when you walk into a Nordstrom's, what happens? They're all over you, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you, you like these pairs of shoes? You know what, maybe we have another pair of shoes that are just like that, but maybe they're a little nicer. You know, so now they're making suggested items, right? Now they're, they're, they're suggesting other things. How many of you have checked out on Amazon and uh, you bought an item and said, people who bought this item also what? Bought this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How many of you have ever bought one of those other items, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Yes. So these are things that you can leverage on your website. That's all. I know this isn't a comprehensive class, but there is a series of articles on my website. Uh, I do workshops on this. I've done a bunch of them. Uh, six reasons your website isn't effective. It goes through each of the major areas and tells you what What's going wrong? What you can do to fix it gives lots of examples. Uh, and there's also a link there to the actual slides from a couple of the workshops. In fact, if you go to the slides here, you'll see those slides there as well if you want to know, okay? So your turn to walk, uh, work. Uh, what do you want visitors to do when they land on your web page? Go ahead and fill that out on your form real quick. And we don't even have time to cover things like taglines and all that, lead lines. Those are all on this, in this series of articles that's up here. Remember, I told everybody not get overwhelmed at the beginning of the night, right? I, <laughs> I know it's a lot of information, but hopefully uh, some of this will stick and you'll be able to take it with you. And that's why I gave you the worksheets. That's why I'm giving you the uh, uh, URLs and QR codes to go and look over the material again. All right, anybody have an answer written down yet? Yeah. Leave contact information. Buy to what I'm selling. Okay. Leave a contact information. And buy the actual buying process is important too. So how would they buy something on your website? What is the, what is the process? Do they just see an ad for something or some text and click on it and go to a store? What's the process? I'm putting buy buttons on everything that I'm promoting. Okay. So if they like it, they can push the button and say buy. It says buy now. Okay. Anyone else? Got something written down? Anybody need help on what they should have visitors do on their homepage that wants to discuss that? Um, refer others. A referral. So after they take their own action, they find for the other, uh, invite others. Invite others to? Invite others to your page or uh, provide that information to their... Okay, so you might do that through a social share button, right? 
So share this on Facebook, share this on Instagram, share this on Twitter. Might be a good solution for that. But on a web page, how would you do that? Just there's share buttons. You can, uh, you can put them on, there's actually, um, uh, there's several buttons that are pre-made. Uh, if you're using WordPress, which, I, which is what I predominantly develop in, uh, there are all kinds of plugins that you can put in there and make it, make it uh, work well uh, for you. But those are, you know, social share buttons are great for that. If I'm moved by what you're doing and I want my friends to know about it, I click on my Facebook button and uh, has me, if I'm already logged in on my computer, it'll just take me right there and I can share it right on my, on my wall. Okay? That's a good way to do it. That's an instant, instant way of doing it. Get people why they're emotional, right? fill out this form, contact me in three days, and then I'll send you something, and then it, people don't want to wait for that anymore. We're, we're instant gratification society, right? Anybody else? <coughs> well, what do you want people to do on your homepage? You also want them, uh, well, you want to have a hook so uh, you, you make them stay and then uh, check out the service. So it's not right. just the, the apply button or the, sure. or the contact button. Yeah, that's, an, that's actually a very important thing is to get them to the interior of your website and check you out more, not just, don't put everything on the homepage so they never, that's a, that's a search engine optimization thing and things I go over with my clients. Usually you want them to go to the interior of the website. So anybody else? Anybody else need help or have something they want to share? Everyone awake? You guys still with me? Yes, we're still here. Okay, all right, good. I told you guys you need that espresso afterwards. <laughs> All right, so uh, what call to action can you use? Anyone got one? Buy now. Buy now is very, buy now is something you use if you're Amazon. Because people, you're already there, it's a destination place you go, and they can get away with that kind of general language. If you can find something more clever than buy now, buy now is certainly better than nothing. But if you can think of something a little more clever to get them to do, take that action. Now, if you have a store and there's a bunch of items, then yeah, you can't get clever with every button. Buy now would work. But if you're in your homepage and you only got one button, that may not, you know. Right. Unless you had some leading text. Remember those call to action blocks? Yeah. If you have some leading text up to that, and then there's bound out, and then that will work. Anybody else? Offer call to action. Discount. Huh? Offer a discount if ordered by. How would you word? Do how would you word it for your website? Anybody got something specific that they would? <clears throat> how about take a tour of the site? Uh, take a tour used to be really effective. I don't. I haven't seen it in a while. Mm. But you're right. Yeah, because people now know that they can just go to the interior of a website using navigation and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly a call to action. Right. If you have nothing else. Limited yeah. availability. Limited availability is a great call to action. Free shipping. Free shipping is a fantastic call to action. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to think of something compelling to get them to subscribe. Subscribe now. Again, it's one of those things you see a lot of, but it's it's not really effective unless there's some com there's some other compelling reason to go with it in there. But it's certainly a call to action. Yeah. Get you know get free advice or you know, uh, learn how to reduce your costs, you know, that kind of thing are good. But you do have, I think, you do have to make it obvious that they're subscribing to something. So, yeah. Free membership for 30 days. Free membership, which we talked about, fantastic. Like, depending on the industry, secure your date. What's that? Secure your date. Yeah, secure your date would be a great one for you. Fantastic. Don't let me, don't let us forget that. Write that down. I'm, I'm working with Ernesto on his website right now. Secure your date, fantastic. Great. It's great when my clients are teaching me. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Like register now. Register now. Like if they're, they're doing like a, a workshop of a stuff. Limited availability, Limited availability. Register, now. register now. So you're leading it with something, right? Because if you don't time the offer, if you don't get some kind of sense of urgency, then people may just, well, I'll just register tomorrow. And more than likely, they're probably not going to come back, right? Okay, so... Uh, we don't really have time to go over value propositions. I'm trying to make sure we get everything in. Uh, and then just be on your worksheets. There's a couple of places where I ask this on the worksheet. What item will you improve? Take that with you and, and write it down. Because all of this information I'm giving you tonight, all this stuff we're going over, it does no good if you don't take action. If you just put this away and forget about it, don't make notes uh, and get busy, then it's, you know, it's not going to help you. So make sure you take action on some of these things, and that'll be one of my last questions as well.